Next, let's talk about titration curves. Another name that you might hear, another term that can be used synonymously is pH curve. Now, a titration curve is a graph that shows how the pH of a solution changes during a titration. For example, if we had a base in our conical flask, we can determine the pH of that base. We can add a small amount of acid, a known volume. So let's say we add one centimeter cube of acid and we record the new pH. Now add another centimeter cube of acid and we we'll an, we'll record the new pH. And we we'll keep adding one cm cube of acid and we'll just monitor the pH. We can plot a graph of pH versus volume. And from the graph, we can determine the equivalence points of that reaction. Before we actually look at the graphs, there are four graphs that we're going to talk about. I want to give you some examples of strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, weak bases. Strong acids tend to have a pH of anywhere between 0 and 3. Weak acids anywhere from 4 to right below 7. Strong bases tend to have a pH from 11 to 14. Weak bases tend to have a pH from right above 7 to roughly 10. I mentioned right below, so it could be 6.9. And I mentioned right above, so it could be 7.1. That would be void. Very a very 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 weak alkaline. We really only take seven as neutral, so anything above that would be a weak base. And some examples of strong acids: we have hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid. Some examples of weak acids could be any one of the organic acids. So we can have ethanoic acid, we can have methanoic acid, any organic acid, and we can also have carbonic acid. So again, there are four different types of titration curves that you should be familiar with. And the very first of those would be a strong base, strong acid. For this example, we are starting with a strong base. So picture us having a conical flask and in that conical flask we have a strong base. For example, we're starting with some sodium hydroxide. If we take the pH of that sodium hydroxide, remember strong bases can be anywhere from 11 to 14. So when you are making a sketch, you can actually start your graph anywhere right here. Anywhere between 11 and 14 and you get your marks. So notice that as we add the acid, we are gradually adding acid that the pH is slowly decreasing. But we notice at one point along the curve that we see a major decrease. Anywhere we have a significant change in pH tells us that we are at the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where we have 
exactly enough acid to neutralize the base so just enough once we're at the equivalence point if we continue to add the acid then we will notice that the pH will continue to decrease gradually and because this pH curve is one where we have we're adding a strong acid to a strong base then where we end the graph is important as well a strong acid can have a pH of anywhere between 0 and 3 so we'll have to ensure that we end the graph somewhere there I'm just going to talk here again through what that sketch would look like we're going to start off with a strong base so our curve our sketch and we'll only be doing sketches of these our sketch must start with our sketch must start within the range of a strong base as we add the acid the pH is going to gradually decrease until we get to the equivalence point this is where we have just enough acid to neutralize the base and at that point we have a steep decline in the pH as we continue to add acid the pH is going to continue to decrease gradually and we must end our graph anywhere in the range of a strong acid for a strong base strong acid titration we'll notice that the equivalence point is at pH of 7 and this is because the salt that is formed is neither acidic nor basic an example of a titration where we would have a strong base and a strong acid would be if we have sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid this reaction would produce some sodium chloride and water now the salt sodium chloride doesn't have any acidic or basic characteristics so we would notice that at the equivalence point for a strong acid strong base titration that equivalence point is at a pH of 7 so for any strong acid strong base titration the equivalence point occurs at a pH of 7 Next, we'll look at a titration curve for a strong base with a weak acid. Now, again, we're starting with a strong base. A picture in our conical flask will have some sodium hydroxide, and to that, we're adding a weak acid, let's say some vinegar, some ethanolic acid. Because we're starting with a strong base, then the pH that we start with when we're doing our sketch again must be anywhere must be anywhere from 11 to 14 as we add our acid we're adding our weak acid we're going to see a gradual decrease in the pH until we're going to then notice a sudden decrease we're going to see a significant change in the pH which means that it's at the equivalence point and as we continue to add the acid we notice that the pH is going to just taper off so it's going to be decreasing slowly and it just tapers off. There are two differences to note about this curve. First is where the curve ends. 
remember for a weak acid the pH of a weak acid falls anywhere between 4 and 6 or right below 7 so where we end our graph must fall somewhere in that range so that's one we have to look at the pH where we're ending our sketch and the second thing is the position of the equivalence point the pH at equivalence point for a strong base weak acid titration is pH 9 and that's because the salt that is formed will have some basic tendencies We will start our sketch in the range within the range for a weak base. As the acid is added, we're going to see a decrease in the pH, but we'll notice a major decrease when we're at the equivalence point. And if we continue to add acid beyond that point, you will see where it continues to slowly decrease. The pH at the equivalence point for a weak base strong acid titration is a pH of 5 and that's because the salt that is formed has some acidic tendencies or some acidic properties it can act as an acid. An example of a weak base strong acid titration again is if we, were, if we had a titration with some ammonium hydroxide with some hydrochloric acid you could always look back at that list that table that i give you some examples and the final one is if we have a weak base and a weak acid titration to do our sketch we must know the range for a weak base the range for a weak acid we're going to start within that range for a weak base and as we add our acid we're going to have a gradual decrease in the pH. There is a point where it's somewhat steep but it's not very clear on a weak base weak acid um, titration curve. The equivalence point at the end point for a weak base weak acid titration curve is also pH 7. As we're going to form a salt that has neither acidic nor basic tendencies. Now, weak acid and weak base titrations are not generally practiced. It's not something that would give us very accurate results. And as you can see from the graph that is there, it's not easy to identify the equivalence point. It's very easy to pass the equivalence point for a weak base with acid titration. Right. Speaking of titrations, when we are doing titrations in the lab, we tend to use indicators. Now, I won't, go into into de I won't be going into any detail about how indicators work, but indicators are weak acids. They do form an equilibrium, but the same thing that we would have known from c is that an indicator has a, an indicator has a certain color and an acid, and a different color in a base. Now indicators will change color at certain pH. So it's not just that it has a color in a standard color in base, but it will change color at a certain pH. And not at one specific pH, but at a range. So we have what's called the pH range of an indicator. So within that range you're going to see where that color changes where that color change occurs and so from this table you should be familiar with the litmus you should know phenolphthalein and you should know methyl orange let's look at litmus litmus is red in acids blue in bases from this table all the ones that come first will be for the acid and the color that is second is for base Red in acids, blue in bases. 
So if you start with a solution of an acid, the lid must be red. And as we add a base and the pH starts to increase, we would see a change in color between a pH of 5.5 and 8.2. You will have these color changes taking place but because I don't actually align with the equivalence point then we would have stopped our titration we don't have neutralization taking place as well so we should always know the strength of the acid and the base that will tell us what pH would have equivalence point and then we can select an acid and then we can select an appropriate indicator for that particular titration. From this table, the best one to use would have been the Bromo Crystal Green. It changes between 3.8 and 5.4. So the equivalence point would have been 5 for a strong acid based titration, and 5 would fall within that range. If we look at this chart, if we look at this chart, we can actually see the colors, see where the pH range is for that change to occur. So again, I'll just highlight the ones that we should be a little bit familiar with. So for phenolphthalein, according to this chart, we have phenolphthalein being colorless in an acid. At 8.2, we would notice at a pH of 8.2, we would notice that the color would start to change. And by the time it gets to a pH of 10, we're going to have a bright pink color. Another that we should be familiar with is methyl orange. It has this pinkish red color in an acid. And as we get to a pH of 3, we will notice a change. It's going to have this sort of orange color until we get to a pH of 4.4 then it's going to have a more yellow color these images are from a titration where phenolphthalein was used as an indicator so we started with an acid in our conical flask and it is colorless in an acid but as the solution becomes more basic then we would notice a pink color now the pH range means that we're going to see a gradual change but once the solution becomes basic, once it becomes alkaline, we see a bright pink color. Last at the top, notice that it's not really very pink, we can see a hint of pink. Once the color begins to change, we're at the equivalence point, provided you selected a an appropriate indicator you would be at your equivalence point and you would stop right there a single drop one additional drop led to what we're seeing in the flask in the bottom left so a little bit more pink not very very pink either but color at the bottom left is telling me is that we're already at equivalence point where we had just enough base to neutralize the acid but 
we are now moving beyond that. It's getting more pink, which is telling me that we're adding more base. It's still not very bright. If you look at the one on the bottom right, however, this is very pink. So if you are doing a titration and you have this significant color change, so you pass the gradual stage and you have this bright pink color, that means you have already passed, you have now gone way past your equivalence point. And that means you now have a solution that is very basic. So if you read the volume from your beard at this point, you 